you welcome back to module 1 demand forecasting in the previous segment we discussed qualitative methods and now in this segment we will start discussion on quantitative methods of forecasting and there are many methods that we will be discussing so we will be using excel to solve um, the problems of forecasting in this discussion on quantitative methods so we will discuss different time series techniques of forecasting they are generally used for short term forecasting so we will use naive forecasting we will use moving average and we will use exponential smoothing then we will learn to forecast demand generally for long term by considering seasonality and trend or a combination of both we will then discuss causal method of forecasting that is also called associative method of forecasting that is also used for long term forecasting then we will discuss pyramid forecasting technique that is also very commonly used and finally we will discuss one of the best practices for forecasting and that is also used to avoid bull whip effect is cpfr collaborative planning forecasting and replenishment so in general the quantitative methods can be classified into two groups the time series methods and causal methods time series method assume that what has occurred in the past will continue to occur in the future so these methods relate the forecast to only one factor that is time and generally these methods are used for short term forecasting so generally they are used to forecast for next one period causal method associate future demand with some variable other than time and we will discuss uh, this um, uh, technique toward the end of this discussion so first we will discuss time series methods of forecasting i repeat that they are generally used for short term forecasting except for one method that we will discuss toward the end of uh, these methods so the three methods that we will focus on are naive forecasting moving average and exponential smoothing and uh, in moving average we will discuss simple moving average and weighted moving average and in exponential smoothing we will discuss simple exponential smoothing and adjusted exponential smoothing generally these methods the first one the moving average methods and the first of the exponential smoothing focus on catering for the random variations in demand generally in their pure form they do not uh, target uh, they do not address actually the seasonality or trend from here onward using adjusted exponential smoothing and the rest of the methods that we will see we will discuss uh, that these methods address trend seasonality or some methods also address the combination of the two actually the fourth method that falls under time series methods is linear trend line and that is used to forecast for for long term so let's begin with the naive forecasting so naive means simple so demand for the current period is used as next period's forecast so the demand for period of the forecast for period t plus 1 is equal to actual demand for period t for example the forecast for december is equal to actual demand for november so this method is generally used where we have level demand there are not much differences in demand from period to period based on historical data of course it is simple to use quick and easy to prepare easily understandable it cannot provide high accuracy but we will see that in many cases this turns out to be very accurate method and one very important use of this method is that it can be used as a standard for accuracy we will see this point in in detail in one of the methods or in fact more than one of the methods 
in, in subsequent segments that once we have no methods to forecast, uh, to start with, uh, uh, with forecasting using a certain method, then we make the initial forecast as a naive forecast. So we will come back to this point later. So in this case, in the data set that you have, uh, we have uh, the demand for, for 12 months. And if you make forecast, that will be simply equal to the actual demand for the previous period. For example, the forecast for February will be equal to actual demand for January, that is 36. The forecast for March will be equal to actual demand for February, that is 42. For April, it will be 56 and so on. And similarly, you can calculate the forecast error as actual demand minus forecast and absolute error, error squared and absolute percent error, and eventually calculate these three measures of forecast error. But we will be making these calculations using Excel. Okay, we have uh, this data set for, for five pocket cargo jeans. And using naive method, we have to make the forecast for January 2020 in this case. So we will start with February 2018. So the forecast for the February will be equal to actual demand for January. So it's so simple method to use. We can simply drag and we can come up with a forecast of 102 in this case for January. 2020, these are in hundreds of units, so it's 10,200 actually. The forecast error will be equal to actual minus forecast, and we can simply drag to find the error till uh, December 2019. The absolute error will be equal to uh, using this function ABS, so absolute of this error. So you can see we have error as plus or minus. So now in absolute error, we will have error without negative sign. So we can find error squared. So this value of error squared. So we can drag to find the squared error for the rest of the months and absolute percent error is absolute error divided by demand. I have already made this cell to be a percentage cell, but if you haven't, you can change it from above. So mean absolute deviation will be the average of absolute uh, errors from February uh, 2018 till December 19. That turns out to be 6.4. Mean squared error will be average of uh, these error squared. That turns out to be 61.6. .6. And mean absolute percent error will be average of absolute percent errors. So that turns out to be 7.5%. And you can see the chart as well, that in this case, specifically, the forecast seems to be really accurate. It, it, it looks very close to the actual demand. But once we have applied different methods, actually, then we can compare which method turns out to be most accurate. But in this case, this doesn't seem to be a bad option actually to, to use knife work. 